Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Noma Kosi Maboza. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if you're a returning subscriber, it's a pleasure to have you back once again. I hope you find value in this video. So today I'm going to be talking about why is teaching English not for everybody? Okay, so before you get into that, let's roll the clip. All right, so as you know, I have four years of experience going on five teaching English online. And I've come to find that not just teaching English, but every job, not every job is for everyone. And it's very important that you know the type of person that you are before diving into a career. In a space of desperation, we often make choices that we otherwise wouldn't make to put food on the table. I've done that too. So it's completely understandable and it's also just normal. However, in my journey of finding myself career-wise, I've come to accept that there are jobs that are just not for me. I have call center experience and I'm absolutely grateful for that experience simply because it taught me how to do cold calls and how to be confident in a call with a stranger or to, con to converse with a stranger and build rapport. However, what I've found with taking a job, just any job, is that it wears you out and it leaves you in a space of not even knowing who you are, what you want and what you are all about. You get into that state of exhaustion. So the reason why teaching English online is not for everybody is because it looks for certain characteristics. I'll name a few. As an English teacher, you need to understand that these people have a very small small understanding. Some have a big understanding, but most of them have a very small understanding. They know the language. They just don't know how to express themselves clearly. If you lack patience, this job is not for you. If you don't have the patience to teach somebody and to allow them to grow in what they're learning, teaching English is not for you. Because you'll be impatient with your clients and what will happen is that your clients will get to a point where they will reserve themselves and not express themselves in a way that you want them to or in a way that you hope they should at, this, at the level that they are. And they will ultimately end the lesson and give you negative feedback. Negative feedback means less bookings. So it's very important to check yourself, be honest with yourself Am I patient enough? The second point is teaching English requires you to smile. I don't do a lot of that. I don't know why, but in the lesson, I actually smile. And most of the time, the reason I smile is because of the kind of lesson that I'm having with my students. You need to be smiling and also giving them that welcoming um, facial expression to say, listen, it's okay. Take your time. I understand. Keeping a smile. Knowing deep down that we could peruse through this very quickly. You know? So if you don't have the attitude of smiling in a situation where you're uncomfortable, teaching English is just, it's not for you. Okay? Um, being prone to being asked questions. Now, Chinese students, from my experience, Chinese students, um, I don't know about other students, but they learn English as a subject they learn it as a subject rather than a language. So they will come at you with subject-based questions. Like, for example, teacher, is this a verb or is this um, a noun? You are coming as just an English speaker and you're not approaching it from both angles. You'll be, you'll be challenged. They will challenge you. And it'll require you to think very fast and to act very fast simply because they have learned English in school. However, they've not had the practice to speak or they don't have enough people to speak it with. And they are coming to the class to speak, yes, to a native speaker, but they are approaching it from a language space. So you need to att uh, attend to those needs and 
make sure that you satisfy both needs the ability and the option to speak as well as answering language based questions so if you a subject based questions so if you take it only as i'm coming to teach english because i speak english and that's it you need to be prepared for questions like teacher is this a gerund um is this um can we use this please put this in a sentence for me for example and is this a present tense or a present continuous tense at two o'clock in the morning and still keep a smile on your face so it is a bit of a challenge and you need to be a patient person to put up or to answer those questions without losing your cool also you need to understand that the third thing is that the the it's the fourth thing actually the students some of them are young with young people comes an attention span and it is your duty as a teacher because as much as you're a tutor to them you're a teacher to try and retain their attention and if you cannot to diverse with to digress with them but find a way to lead them back into the lesson instead of saying no 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 you can't do that in the class you need to find a way to say oh what are you doing oh okay and then try and find a way to link that back into the class if you're going to come with a lot of authority you're going to have a lot of problems because negative feedback equals less bookings what else is there um what other challenges do i come across oh culture shock that's the fifth thing culture shock is a thing and i think that's the main thing you need to understand the country and the culture as well as the politics of the country that you're going to teach in because if you come with for example in south africa we can say and do most things um because it's country you know what i mean and you need to understand that in certain countries some of those things actually do not even exist or they don't know them or they probably not allowed to say them now i was fortunate enough to be trained by a company before starting to work independently and they taught me a lot about the culture the chinese culture the certain things that i just I cannot just do or I cannot just say or I cannot just explain express um and respecting those things and coming to terms that it's not even personal it's just a job it is literally just a job and I come and I approach it as a job and I teach my lesson and I get out um I avoid certain conversations even though some students might want to engage in them I uh, you 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 at some point you must act like you don't know because you don't want to be against the laws of that country remember you are working in another country and you have to respect their laws you have to respect what their government says so to avoid breaking the law or being in breach of your contract and possibly losing your contract and being blacklisted as a teacher just approach it as a job follow the guidelines respect the country's laws and it's very important to know them and stick to the material that you've been given and answering certain questions that are within that country's law so those are some of the challenges you come across sometimes it's noisy sometimes the student sometimes there's literally a typhoon and the students just want to have a lesson and you need to meet them at the level that they are that's another thing you need to be able to meet your students at the level that they are i'm looking at the time because i have to rush to pick up my son at school so if your student is at a lower level Street you have to adjust yourself let's go grab a glass of water and why don't you go wash your hands sorry about that you have to meet them at the level that they are in and approach it like that with kindness and patience and understanding most of the time you'll find that teaching english online opens you up to being a lifelong learner because you will learn from your students you you they will teach you things about their culture and about their country and it's very important for you to memorize those and remember those so that you can have them in the conversation with other students and say oh is this what you're talking about or is this what you're talking about when you come with information about them it gets them a bit exciting excited sorry so when somebody approaches you and be like oh i've been to south africa i went to cape town table mountain you know you feel some kind of way like this person is generally is genuinely interested in who i am in my country so it's it's the same 
it's the same the same laws apply so those are some of the challenges and that's why it's not for everybody um the times also are a challenge um at the moment i'm teaching at night because the demand is at night something else you need to understand i'm teaching at night between 12 and half past five because no job is easy because it's not just oh i'm just gonna wake up turn on my computer and teach i have to wake up and teach my classes look presentable look presentable it's very important remember looks are very important in the asian community look presentable teach your classes and then um get your rest i usually teach my classes get my son ready and get him going and do other things that i need to do and then in the afternoon as, as well after 12 i have to teach more classes so most people will ask me how much do they pay it's not easy for me to say how much do they pay because there are different plus platforms that people teach on. There are different bonuses. There's different um, schedules. The money you make is up to you. That is my answer. The money you make is up to you. How much work are you putting in? How much time do you have to spend teaching? So those are some of the challenges. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. Follow me on TikTok. I do post a lot more often than I do here. And I do answer some of the questions and have lives that answer some of the questions that you would like to have answered. My TikTok handle is at Maboza, Maboza Kosi, but it's literally on my, on the description box down below. And it's on the... What's this thing? Whew. On my profile. On my profile. So thank you so much, everybody, for coming. And I hope to see you again very soon. We're staying consistent. Two videos a week. Let's keep them coming. I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.